Years later, is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on Frailty. It was released on November 7, 2001, so does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> Thursday. What year? No. What? Year is it? Ever heard of this movie before? Matthew McConaughey is in it. It has a cool looking poster of Matthew McConaughey in white. It shows like a red background and like all dark. That's like my only reference of this film. And I think it's pretty damn good. It reminds me, funny enough, when I was watching this film, I was like, wait a minute, did Supernatural rip off of this? It reminds me of season two, episode 13, House of the Holy, about people seeing angels, claiming they're having messages from God, and then what they're doing, killing innocent people, or supposedly in their minds and their perspectives, killing these so called bad people. It reminds me so much of that episode. So I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it clearly is inspired by this. Use this film as a way to have an episode about Houses of the Holy. So it's got Matthew McConaughey, both a present and younger version of himself and his younger brother, Adam, and his father. All they have is themselves, group of three, living alone, or not living alone, but them living alone, not having a mother. And one day, supposedly, their father is like, hey, guess what? I had this vision or dream that I saw God or a message from God saying that they have a mission. They have a goal. They need to kill bad people. And I immediately am like, okay, you know, that's super sus. I'm very much skeptical about this and then young matthew is like okay this is some bs however adam is like yes he believes in this he even writes like a list of bullies that he wants to get rid of because of this whole message thing that his dad mentioned to him which is not the way at all adam is using this as an excuse to get rid of his bullies permanently and so that's like the overall plot and that's interesting because throughout this film there's layers being peeled of like is their father really telling the truth one or three things one he truly believes that he did see like an angel or got a message from god and he needs to kill bad people two he's just going insane he needs help mentally or three he's using this as an excuse to kill people because he has this need of killing human beings but he's using this message from god or angels as a facade to hide his true nature those were the three things that were in my head either one of those three and we slowly find out each killing you either lean kind of skeptical or more believe in kind of like adam where he's telling the truth he's getting a message from god or angels and we need to kill the bad people our mission and it sounds crazy it sounds nuts and what makes it interesting is the fact that it's family so young matthew i don't know what his actual name is the character name i'm just gonna call him young matthew because because Matthew McConaughey is narrating to a cop in the present. He goes to his office all like looking disheveled and whatnot. It's being narrated by him. There's one moment where he's like, he doesn't believe any of this. And then once the killings start happening, these victims, he's like, no, I don't believe any of this shit. That is crazy. He tries to convince Adam and to come over on his side. But Adam truly believes in this faith, believes in the fact that he's killing evil people in the service of God or angels. Now they showed on screen four victims, four kills. And so the first victim is a woman. At first, he probably knows this woman. When we see him going to her house, there's like this big guy shock look bringing to his house or shed and he shows his sons how to kill the woman because he touched her head or something or touched her and like this is like shaky cam thing or whatever i'm like is he seeing visions i mean he's truly insane there's no way that he's seeing visions he's using this as an excuse to traumatize his sons to kill people and so he kills his lady out of the service of what he saw what message he got they are demons they need to be cleansed and they need to get rid of their sins or whatever something along those lines it sounds like a crazy person it sounds like if a religious person went a wall and was like you know what i'm on a holy mission i want to kill all these demons but turns out they're actually humans or whatever you know the second victim is an older guy and clearly young matthew does not like this he is disgusted by this he's the one that's initially like whatever dad you're insane and the more killings happen he's like okay he wants to go to the police he truly does but whenever he does something always goes wrong first time he thought about going to the police he didn't go because it was a lot harder saying it than doing it second time i think it's a second victim no hold on that's later on but the second time it's like a later victim and then he actually goes to the police but the police are gone off somewhere in this town he goes to like a neighbor or whatever next to the police house that guy brings young matthew back home tries to explain everything but with the dad knowing everything he does he blames matthew for killing this man who isn't a demon because he will find out the truth which adds on to the whole he's doing this as a facade in need of killing so he just kills a random person because he was afraid that they're gonna find out about his holy mission the third victim is the whole killing stuff of going up to whatnot seeing that you made me murder blaming his own son for his own actions and has him locked up for like i don't know how long i did not pay attention to that but has him locked up to a point where he thinks that he's been reformed and believing that there are demons around him and they need to be killed and then the fourth victim was the last draw where their father hands over the axe to young matthew he gets it he thinks he's about to kill the fourth victim but nope axe his father's heart killing and kind of getting rid of this whole holy mission thing because it sounds ridiculous fulfilling his destiny the father is saying you need to fulfill your destiny i guess this is it you know this is him filling his destiny killing his father because he's just gone insane from his perspective present day matthew mcconaughey thinks that his younger brother killed all his people in his town because they're called god's hand killer the term hold on oh yeah god's hand
Ten Killer. It's like serial killer name. As we go along, the cop guy drives to this grave of the bodies. Turns out Matthew McConaughey, the narrator, is actually Adam. Now, obviously, something was up because it was teased like the cop guy saying that you're hiding something. So it was obviously teased that something was gonna get revealed or something was gonna happen. He even mentions the picture of the mother and the cop guy. He always mentions that. Turns out he is his neck victim of this whole thing and belief. But then it also turns out that Adam and his father are telling the truth. Apparently, they can't really see demons. And these so-called demons are human beings doing very nasty things. Cop guy. The reason why Matthew keeps mentioning his mother in the photo because whenever he touches him to feel his demons, he killed his own mother in his flashback thing. So they really can't see their inner demons. So is that like the little demon or like the devil or whatever? It's humans personal old demons, dirty laundry kind of bad shit that they did in the past. And supposedly it's a message from God or angels that Adam and his brother are on this mission getting rid of these people that are demons or labeled as demons because they have inner demons that they need to get out and all that stuff. So I was not expecting that. Like I really thought that this movie was gonna go one or two ways. Younger Matthew's gonna get rid of his father, which did happen, and then live this long regretful life. Or turns out Adam and his father were gonna be crazy. One of those happened, but those weren't the ending or twist or whatever. Turns out it's actually real. I actually see their inner demons. Whenever they touched him, it is like this shaky camp thing. And that was just kind of like, wait, what? I didn't expect that. I really didn't. I was like, no, they're not gonna. That sounds ridiculous. It sounds crazy. But it actually turns out to be true. I was very much skeptical throughout this whole film. Each time in the flashback scenes, their father brings home a person to kill. It brings up the question, is he crazy? Is he telling the truth? Or is it a bit of both? Are they using this as a facade to do his feelings? And yeah, like, I don't know. I just didn't expect that. The film really does a great job of making audiences really doubt the father's kind of motives because it does sound crazy. And the fact that he was telling the truth and he wasn't doing it out of malice or having it as a facade and doing it because he truly believes and there is truth to him getting rid of these people and these so-called inner demons was really good on the film's part of subverting your expectations of like, okay, yeah, this guy's just a nut job. But no, he was telling the truth. So 20 years later, royalty most definitely holds up. I would recommend people watch this movie. It is pretty damn good. It brings up doubt about motives of the characters. And I'm assuming most people are going to be skeptical going into this film of like, okay, yeah, this father's crazy. Yeah, whatever. And it's like, oh shit, he's telling the truth. All right. So yeah, watch this movie, Frailty. It's pretty damn good. Still holds up 20 years later. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far. And thank you for watching.